All right, guys. Sorry I've been away for a couple days, two or three days, as far as updates go, but I've been dealing with the monitor chassis issue, which I'll explain in a minute. But uh, here it is. I mean, for all intents and purposes, it's done. I got new buttons, new joysticks, got them all wired up. Only thing I haven't done yet is I have not drilled the run button, and I have not made a new Lexan piece. I'm going to do that uh, all at one time, and I'll kind of go into a little bit of a detail how to do it. So if anybody needs to know in the future, they can refer to the video. But uh, basically, everything's wired up, and I was able to use the factory wiring. You can see here all the factory wiring. It's running down here to my iPad. Now, for those of you who don't know, these iPads are only about 40 bucks, and what they do is they interface with your keyboard. I have a USB keyboard here, so it's not... This side's your keyboard connection. This side is the wire that runs down to your uh, computer. Because I have a USB keyboard, I don't have anything plugged into here, but... This plugs into your PS2 slot down there in the computer, and you interface all your wiring to this thing, and it has, I believe, 17 positions on player for player one, player two, so you can actually do, if you wanted to, you got four positions for your up, down, left, right, then you could add, you know, as many buttons as you want, uh, up to 17 positions total. So that's what I'm interfacing for the controls, and they're all wired up and they all check good. New joysticks and buttons and everything, so uh, that's... Uh, what that all entails. Now as far as volume goes, what this thing here is, this is the guts of the inside of a right uh, front channel 5.1 computer system. I bought a 5.1 computer surround system, well it's five years ago, I never used it, it just sat in a box and I figured I'd bust it out for this project and there's a, a subwoofer right there with the various connections that go to the computer. There's a left front hookup and a right front hookup. What I did was I took the right front speaker apart because it housed this volume control and I ran the right front speaker wires to the uh, little uh, tweeter here. I guess it's a mid-range really, a little mid-range speaker that's right here under the grill. And then I ran the left front channel to the uh, full range woofer that's right here. So I have a left and a right and then because that's what this is here. This is a fader and then I have a volume control. This uh, rheostat right here or potentiometer, kind of the same thing, it's a uh, volume control. And I'm not going to mount it right here. It's going to end up. I'm going to run it through the side of the machine and end up being down here behind the coin door, like MK1. So it's, I just open the coin door and, and uh, can control the volume that way. Not like on the main cabinet here. On the main cabinet, I have a volume up and down button because I hacked a keyboard. I hacked a keyboard that has a volume up and down, and I used buttons here to make it more easy. But for this, I kind of want to keep this as original as I can. I'm going to only buttons I'm going to put in here are run. Uh, I'm not the escape. You can see MK1's running here. I'll explain why I'm using this monitor in a second. But MK1's running here. I gotta, I'm got i going to press and hold the, the Player 1 Start button. That's my escape. So I don't, I don't need to wire an escape button or an enter button. What I did was I went through Maximus, which is what I'm using here on my front end. Uh, and I, I used Player 1 and Player 2. Either one of these will be Select. So if I want to choose whatever game I want, let's say MK3 or Vision 2.1. I just press either one of these buttons here and they'll select the game. And uh, so I don't need a select, I don't need a escape. Uh, all I'll need is the two run buttons and I can leave the control panel intact. So that's the game plan for the control panel. So uh, that, that covers the control panel and everything underneath it. And like I say, this is going to all end up getting mounted somewhere. And then uh, I need to make the Lexan and the run buttons. The next thing to do is to interface the marquee and the power switch up top with the power cord. I have a, I'll turn around, I'll, I'm sorry, I'll go around to the back and show you the inside, but I have a power strip. I need to uh, splice the one of the, either the neutral wire or the hot wire in with the switch up top and then interface the marquee and the monitor in with that same wiring. So when I flip the switch, it'll turn everything on so I don't have to unplug and plug and unplug and plug a connector. So. I'll get that all done. Uh, this is kind of a preliminary, just showing you uh, kind of the state the machine's in right now. Now, uh, I think I've pretty much explained everything involved with the machine so far, except the inside. And I'll get to that in a minute, but the reason I'm using this, the main reason I have this monitor here still is because I don't have uh, the correct VGA card yet. The I'm sorry, the correct arcade VGA card. I had to order a PCIe because the I mentioned that Big Pete was going to send me an arcade VGA card and I did. And I really appreciate that but unfortunately I can't use it because the computer I had allocated to run everything here does not have an ATP slot. It has a PCIe slot, a PCI Express. So I'm not able to use this card so 
Uh, I might send it back to him or see what he wants me to do with it. But I have an extra one here courtesy of Big Pete. And uh, another issue is I blew up my chassis. I spent 90 bucks for a chassis shipped from a fellow member at the uh, Killer List of Video Games. I believe is what it was. And I was uh, hooking up the breakout cable to see if the computer would output, what type of image the computer would output on the onboard video card. <clears throat> and it produced an image that what it it uh, it did sync up. It produced a, a split image. You had one side of the screen over here, the other side over here, but it was the same image. And it was, it obviously wasn't usable or playable, so I still needed the arcade VGA card. But what happened was, is I was unhooking the connector off of the chassis. <clears throat> I'll just, it's better to show you here. I got the light so you can see inside, but uh, right here on the connection, I was unhooking it. And I mentioned in the previous video that I don't have any isolation uh, for the chassis for, to the frame, so I, it's just sitting on this uh, Mortal Kombat 4 Arcade Secrets book for right now for installation. What happened was, is I was trying to unhook this, and the, the chassis pivoted, and the bottom corner over here touched the frame and, and arc welded one of the components. And the first thing that happened was, is of course it turned off, and, I, and the fuse blew. And in my head, and out loud, I was thinking, oh, god damn it, you know, and you probably could have heard me three houses down, I yelled it so loud, I was pissed. But there's a happy ending, because I was able to fix it. The first thing that happens is you go to the uh, the horizontal output transistor, or the HOT. That's usually what gets fried first, but it checked good. The IC4 bridge rectifier, or voltage regulator, however you want to say it, that checked good, because usually that's that gets fried also in the power circuit. But those both check good. So the only thing left were the four power diodes. In the power circuit for these uh, Wells Gardner K7000s, there's a... A four diode power circuit. Let's see if I. I got an old 19 inch one here that doesn't work. For obvious reasons, it's completely depopulated. But right here, deep, let's see, you probably aren't going to be able to read it. D19, D20, D21, and D22. There's four diodes there, and those protect your power circuit pathways. Those are normally, under normal circumstances, when you read across a diode, it's only going to allow voltage to go one way. So you put your multimeter on there, and one, you uh, go positive-negative on anode-cathode, and you shouldn't read anything. It should be an open circuit. You turn your wires around, then you should read 0.542 or something like that. That's how you know the diode's good. Well, all four of these diodes were shorted on this chassis right here. All four of them were shorted, so I, I stole these from this one, put them in this one, turned it back on, with the new fuse, of course, and lo and behold, turned on. So, it was a happy ending. I was able to repair the chassis without having to spend another hundred bucks to buy another one. So, lesson learned, don't mess with shit while power's on. I mean, I know that, but I just lapse in judgment. Anyway, so I wanted to explain that. And I only got a couple minutes left here, so what I got to the computer right there. I need to take it back out once I get my arcade VGA card. It should be here tomorrow. And then uh, I got the subwoofer. I have to face it this way because if I face it in uh, towards the front, it's got too much resonance in there and it, the bass is too loud. And it's turned down as low as it can go. It's still too loud. So I have to face it towards the back. And then there's the power strip. I need to interface the... I need to cut this and hook one of the wires back up and run the... and then uh, split the other wire with that power switch. So in essence, that switch is going to touch the two wires and take them apart and touch them. That's how a switch works for those of you who aren't familiar. So I gotta do that. I gotta do some last minute stuff like this and mounting that volume pot and mounting that uh, eye pack and getting everything done. So once I get the arcade VGA card, I'll be able to completely finish uh, wiring everything up and as far as power goes and video display and I'll be able to actually use the monitor now and or at that point I'll be able to use the monitor. So I'll get everything finalized and ready to go and then I'll do a the final part should be the machine 100% complete, up and running, and I'll do some gameplay. And then after that, I might do a, a how-to video, or post a how-to video on cutting Lexan and drilling holes in the in the metal overlay and things like that. So stay tuned for that part, uh, which will be a separate deal from just this restoration. 
or just this multi-deal. But anyway, uh, before the end of the video here, I'll let you hear how the audio is. Let me start the game here. Oh, it, I, I hit mute by accident, I'm sorry. You'll hear the sound, next part. Uh, I accidentally muted it. Anyway, so you'll hear the sound in the next part. But anyway, just wanted to say uh, thanks for following along during this whole deal. And stay tuned for the next update. It should be 100% complete. See you next, see you next time.